Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a frozen berry crisp and this is what it looks like. This is a two layered dessert. On the bottom we have lightly sweetened berries. On top of that we have a buttery crisp streusel flavored with cinnamon, also contains some rolled oats and chopped nuts. Now, this is excellent warm from the oven, room temperature, cold, and I really like it with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. So, the first thing that you will need to do is preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then, you can use either, today I'm using a nine inch, that's 23 centimeter deep dish pie plate. You could also use an eight inch square, that's 20 centimeter baking dish as well, either one. Now, you can either spray the inside of your dish with the, one of those nonstick sprays, or what I did, I just melted a little bit of butter and then I'm going to, with a pastry brush, just bottom and sides. Okay, simple enough. So we're gonna start with the fruit. Now we are using frozen berries. And the reason I like to use frozen berries is we don't have to make this dessert only when fresh berries are in season. We can make it year, year round because frozen berries are always available. And you know what, the, the quality is consistently good. So it's a great way to make this dessert and then two, with used frozen berries, there's no washing or picking through them to see if there's any soft ones. Just get a bag. Now you can use you can use one berry or a medley. I just buy. You will need six cups, which is one and a half pounds or 750 grams of berries. I just bought a bag like a medley of berries. It's great too, is you don't have to defrost the berries before you make this dessert. We just use the frozen berries. I just took these out about 10 minutes ago. So mine, this medley I bought is blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. You could add some strawberries in there, cherries, whatever you like. So put that in a bowl, and then what I have in a bowl here is a quarter of a cup, 32 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. That's going because, you know, berries will release a lot of juice, especially the frozen ones, they tend to re release, I think, more juice than if I used the fresh berries. So um, that's how, why I'm using uh, that amount. Uh, if you don't have flour, another choice is cornstarch. And then to that, I'm going to add some sugar. Now, the amount of sugar you add, really, you can, to your taste. I made this a couple times. And I like to use a third of a cup, 65 grams of granulated white sugar. You know, if you're, the ones you're buying are sweet, you can maybe just do a quarter of a cup, 50 grams. Or if you like it really sweet, you could, you know, up that to a half a cup, 100 grams. But I'm going to do it right in the middle at <laughs> a third of a cup. So I'm just mixing that, the two together. If you wanted to, you could even... Add like a teaspoon of like lemon or orange zest. So I'm just going to right over top. I know people are going to ask, could you use fresh berries? Yes, you could. Obviously, if you're using fresh berries, the baking time that I give you, it's going to be less. That's the big difference. And, you know, you, you could like maybe use a little less flour if you want, or if you like the juices thick, you could use the same amount of flour. And yes, you could, you could use this recipe with just other fruit. It's a good basic recipe. So just kind of mix this to get the berries all covered with that as well as you can. They're frozen, so, <laughs> you know. And then we're just gonna dump them in. Not pretty easy. <laughs> okay. So get on, and you're going to have, which I have, you know, some of the mixture, the flour and sugar. Here, I'm just going to even that out first. 
and then I'll just sprinkle the, the remaining flour and sugar over top. So that's our berries. Pretty simple. Now we will do the topping. I'm going to do it by hand. If you wanted to, you could, use, you could do this in your food processor. So in a bowl, I have a half a cup, 65 grams of all-purpose flour, plain flour. To that, a quarter, of a quarter of a cup, 50 grams of granulated white sugar, and a quarter of a cup, 50 grams of light brown sugar. If you're using a measuring cup, you know, with brown sugar, just pat that down. It's so soft. And I, like I said at the beginning, I like a little bit of ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon. If you don't want a cinnamon flavor, you can just leave that out. Or if you want another spice, you could add that. And then just an eighth of a pinch, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'll just whisk that together. This is such an easy dessert. You know, if you kind of like a pie, fruit pie, this is a good alternative, a lot easier. You don't have to worry about making pastry and rolling it out. And it's really good. So now I'm going to add a half a cup, 113 grams of cold butter. I like to use unsalted because I like the flavor and that way I can control the amount of salt in my recipe, but you know, if you have a favorite salted butter, go ahead and use that. And I did cut it into cubes because we are going to cut the butter into the flour mixture until we have coarse crumbs. So if you cut it up, it's better than having like a block of butter. Like I said, you could do this in your food processor. You just want to process the butter into the flour mixture until you have coarse crumbs. So just be careful, watch it. But I'm going to use this pastry blender to do it. You could use two knives and just kind of cut it, or you can even use your fingertips. Just until we have coarse crumbs. Okay, so we are done. Got a little exercise with our arm there. Now, if you were doing this in your food processor, I would then now transfer it to a bowl because you want to stir in the rolled oats and the chopped nuts because we don't want them to be processed. So, we have coarse crumbs. Let's give that a little stir. And I'm going to add three quarters of a cup, 70 grams of rolled oats. I'm using the old fashioned rolled oats. There's old fashioned and there's quick cooking. Really, the difference is, is in the thickness of the oats. So I like a thicker texture, so I'm using the old fashioned. If you, you, all you have in the house is quick cooking, that's fine. You can use those as well. Just dump that right in there. And then a half a cup, 50 grams of chopped nuts. I'm using pecans today. Buying local. We grow them here in Georgia, so what I'm using. You could use walnuts, you could use almonds, hazelnuts, or if you don't like nuts, you can just leave them out totally. And just stir that together. And we are done. You know, this is dessert. What you could do is make your this topping and even freeze this and have this in your freezer and you could have your, a bag of frozen berries in the freezer. And then when you want to make this, you just pull out both from the freezer, put it together, and pop it in the oven. And you will have a great dessert under an hour. So now I'm just going to evenly, as even as I can, sprinkle this over the top. Now you will notice I did put my um, baking dish on a larger on a sheet pan, on a baking sheet here, my pan on baking sheet now. Yeah. Um, I do that one, it's a little easier to transport it into the uh, 
oven. And two, just in case the fruit bubbles up and kind of bubbles over, it will go on the sheet pan, not in the bottom of my oven. Because who likes to have to uh, clean their oven? Not me. I like lots of dolly. <laughs> I won't lie. So just kind of evenly, okay. Make sure all the fruit's covered. Oh. Okay. So now, baking. I'm going to say, because they're, the berries are frozen, it's going to take longer than if you had used fresh. It's going to take, I would say, between 50 and 60 minutes. The time is just one thing. The, what you really want to look for is the, the top will turn a, a golden brown. And more, more importantly, around the edges, the, you will start to see the fruit bubbling. That's the sign. You know, if you're making a pie or a crisp, that's how you know when it starts to bubble around the edges, you know it's done. So I'm going to say 50 to 60 minutes. You know, rotate your baking sheet front to back about halfway through to get a nice even bake. Okay. So, our berry crisp is done. Look how beautiful golden brown our streusel topping is. And you start to see it bubbling around the edges. That's the important part to look for. So now put, I put my pan on a wire rack. Now it's a little hot. So what we're going to do is let this cool down a little. I still, I'm still going to serve it warm, but we, it's too hot now. And then when we come back, we will try some. So I let the berry crisp cool, maybe it's about 20 minutes, so it's still quite warm. Keep in mind, just like when you do a berry pie, the longer you let this cool, the juices will thicken. So now you could serve this on a plate, but you know, I think of a crisp as more like a casual dessert. So I just like it in a bowl. So either one, and just using the spoon. Fingers here. Oh, look at that. Oh. And there, like I said, there is some juices on the bottom, but I actually like to kind of drizzle it over the top. As you see here. And then I have to have vanilla ice cream. I just, especially when it's warm, which is my favorite way to eat it. And then you have the warm, crisp, and the cold ice cream kind of melts. I mean, you use a scoop, but I'm just going to use my spoon. Put it on top. There we have it. Perfect dessert. I'm just going to let that melt a little. Get a little ice cream. Oh. Oh, it's wonderful. You have the juicy, sweet fruit. And then you have that crisp, you know, it is crisp, <laughs> actually, uh, especially freshly baked. And then this, a little bit of cinnamon flavor. And then you have the rolled oats, the flavor of that, and the crunch of the nuts. And then, of course, you have that cold ice cream on top it really let me just I'll just try it one more time to make sure it's oh now you can like I said it's just really good um, you can make this year round but I don't know about you but I especially like any type of crisp in the winter months and I like it warm, although, like I said, you can serve it room temperature, or I do store it in the fridge so you can have it cold from the fridge. Normally, though, 
I'll just say how I like it. I like it warm. So even if I have it in the fridge, I just put on a plate or in a bowl, just pop it in the microwave, just warm it up a little bit. Whipped cream is also very good on this. Or if you want to go more healthy, uh, like a dollop of yogurt, plain yogurt. And you can cover and store that, this about, I would say, two, three days. It's really good. Try it, you know, one berry, a medley of berries. You could even pop in some berries with maybe some peaches or other types of fruit. So try it. You must try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.